the truth was out for all to see. Dexter Kibo is the one who fathered Raspberry Boba Volkarp's son, not her soulmate Zayden. And though Zayden hadn't realized his brother is the father of the baby he originally assumed to be his son, he was certain that his soulmate had cheated on him, and out of anger, he impulsively did something about it. Relationship advice Volkov and Zayden Kiba are officially broken up once and for all. Ronette, my dear, was beyond devastated. Her first love, her soulmate, the man that she dreamt of marrying and starting a family with since she was just a teenager, hated her guts. And it was all her fault. Her son looks so confused. Shouldn't I be the one crying bitch? And soon after, he did. At least Regurgitate had something to distract her from her breakup with Zayden, her perfect son. Jasper Akira Volkov, who she adored with every fiber of her being. Though, as excited as she was to be a new mother, she still couldn't shake the cloud of despair that reigned over her. And it will only get worse with such close proximity to Zayden. Today, the Kiloha family was finally moving to Evergreen Harbor. Autumn and Shanna closing on the house just a day prior. Since Dexter was right next door, and he and Robin Rihanna Fenty had some things they needed to figure out. The single mum and her son Jasper were coming with the Kilahus as well. Just a few days prior, on the morning of Rustic Architectures and Zayden's baby shower and gender reveal, Shana Kialoha had a meeting with her real estate agent. The two of them went over exactly what Shantam wanted for their new house, making the house in Evergreen Harbor a priority. The real estate agent hopped right to it. In the meantime, she spent lots of time bonding with her nephew Jasper while waiting on an update. Autumn was extremely excited to get on with the rest of her life and grow old in Evergreen Harbor with her wonderful wife and beautiful kids. But before she leaves her hometown of Moonwood Mill behind, there was something she needed to do first. Just a day after Road to Recovery gave birth, Autumn went ahead and put her baby Oasis to sleep, reading her a bedtime story as her sister and our heir, Rora Kialoha, slept peacefully in the bed next to hers. After both of the twins were sound asleep, she took a minute for herself in what would soon be her old bedroom, and stared down at the keepsake box her late mother Alexis Volkov had given to her all those sims, years ago right before she died. She never opened it, she was too scared too, she didn't think she'd ever be prepared for the emotions that would surge out of her from opening this box, but in order to start her new life, she needed to open it. She looked for her wife Shanna, telling her what she was about to do, and that she needed her support in order to do it. She was so nervous to see what was inside that box and might need emotional support after. Like always, Shanna would be there for her wife, taking a moment to compliment Autumn's strength. She has come so far since her teen years, going to rehab, conquering her drug addiction, grieving Jacob, not to mention River and Alexis. She was the strongest woman she'd ever met. She was sure she would be able to handle opening Alexis's keepsake box just as easily Autumn really needed to hear that, and so, she opened it, and it revealed some items she wasn't expecting. A portrait of Alexis and Chris at Autumn's and Shanna's wedding, an assortment of crystals and geodes for Shanna, as well as plants and animals that Autumn had never seen before, most likely from Alexis's visit to Sixum. A rare moon petal from the top of Moonwood Cliff, a flower that only blooms during a full moon, but the one item Alexis left for her that shook Autumn to her core was something she never had the privilege of seeing before. Alexis left Autumn one seed for a money tree. With the money tree Alexis left for Autumn, Shanna was quick to use magic to duplicate its seed and our matriarch was quick to uproot her dying plants so she could plant it. After quickly growing the tree to its full capacity and super-selling it, Autumn and Shanna had enough money to buy their home in Evergreen Harbor in one lump sum payment. They would never have to worry about a mortgage, and neither would their children.
and with her life packed up, as well as her wife's, children's, sisters, and nephews, it was time for Autumn to say goodbye to the one sim she'd be leaving behind, her father Christopher. He played a big role in her decision to move out as quick as possible. She kept it real with him. She was having trouble looking at him, talking to him, trusting him, ever since that night with Clint. She finds it difficult to recognize her own father, and that scared her. Since Chris will reveal nothing about Alexis's role in Clint's family's deaths, Autumn was left with no choice but to give her father an ultimatum. If he wants to be involved in her life or his grandchildren's lives, he needs to tell her, as well as Ezra, Edward, Nicole, and recurring character, everything he knows about what Alexis did to Clint's family. Until that day, he is not welcome in her home, and she wasn't changing her mind. Clint deserves to heal, so she hoped he would think about it, because Autumn would hate to picture her dad being here in this big house, all alone, with no one coming to visit him. But she can't do anything about that now. The choice was up to him. She gave him a new Evergreen Harbor address and told him, whenever he is willing and ready to talk about Clint's family, that she will be there ready to listen. Until then, this was goodbye. It didn't take long for the Kilahas to settle into their new home. Shanna was in the basement planting three money trees, the two of them wanting to keep it out of sight from their children and neighbors. Rescinded application fervently helped Autumn with setting up her massive upstairs and downstairs gardens when she wasn't tending to baby Jasper's needs, it helped get her mind off the breakup. The twins Aurora and Oasis explored their new home and all the new toys their mummies bought them, and Sage was apparently grilling kebabs. At least the partial disappointment is contributing. Autumn and Shanna felt truly blessed to finally have their own home. They had a set way on how they were going to raise their children and were getting started with it right away. They really wanted to prioritize healthy, homemade food, so the little lesbians went ahead and prepared grab-and-go snacks, sages school lunches, plant milk, and Autumn even milled her own flour. Shanna set up her extra crystals all over the house to manifest good vibes and good luck to anyone who walked inside her home. After setting up a few pictures of her family, Autumn went ahead and set a weekly cleaning schedule for Sage. He was required to do chores every Saturday at noon and the girls would get the same treatment after they age up to children the following day. And once they were unpacked and the housework was complete for the day, the new homeowners took some time for themselves to christen their bedroom. That was right around the time when Jasper woke up to eat. His mummy Ritalin waking up right with him, as she gave him new solid foods to try in his high chair and melted over his precious face. Raisin Bran noticed that the sun was beginning to rise in the sky, and with that, so did her heart rate and blood pressure. She had plans to meet with someone, someone whose life she was about to change forever. Ribosome had called Dexter Kibo to meet her at the community center in Conifer Station. He showed within a few minutes, almost fainting when he saw who Round and Round was holding. She wanted to start this off by saying she was sorry to Dexter. She couldn't be any more apologetic. What she did to him, making him wonder if she was carrying his baby, was terrible. And she couldn't possibly fathom what she put him through. He didn't deserve that. She went ahead and handed baby Jasper to his father Dexter, telling him his name, Jasper Akira Volkov. Dexter was surprised by the name choice, Akira. Red Robin told him that it was actually Zayden's idea for a first name, but she didn't like it enough. She always liked the name Jasper for a boy, and decided to keep Akira as a middle name. Dexter liked it. He thought it fit him. Republican Era could only imagine how shocked Dexter must be. She reassured him that if he doesn't want to be in Jasper's life, he didn't have to be, she would understand. She's prepared to become a single mother if that's what it comes down to. But Dexter wasn't going anywhere. 
He meant what he said at the baby shower. He wasn't abandoning his child, he'd somewhat prepared himself for fatherhood just in case after Zayden told him she was pregnant. He raised Voldemar growing up, he was more than prepared to become a dad and planned on being very active in this little boy's life. Of course, after hearing her now ex-fiance's name, radiographer asked how he was doing. Dexter said that he hasn't seen him at all for the past few days, as devastated as she was. Reparations couldn't focus on Zayden right now. She has a beautiful baby boy to raise, and she felt at peace knowing she had someone by her side to help. Jasper was her life now. She also couldn't think about Zayden any longer. Because of the promise she made to Jasper's father on the night of her baby shower, the one she made in Edward's and Hilary's upstairs bathroom, the one that she was patiently waiting for Dexter to bring up himself, 